Hello, everyone. We're going to get started. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Tess Landon, and I am the manager of learning and engagement at the Chicago Architecture Biennial. I'm pleased to welcome you to today's program, Soil Lab, a global collaboration. For those that are new to CAB, the Chicago Architecture Biennial is a nonprofit organization based in Chicago and dedicated to creating an international forum on architecture and urbanism. Through a program that includes exhibitions, commissions, workshops, performances, publications, and more, CAB advances architectural innovation and thinking by engaging practitioners, students, and the public to reimagine the built world both globally and locally. CAB is committed to a vision for architecture and design that is sustainable and equitable. Today's program is part of CAB's new model of free year-round programming. Programming held throughout, the, um, throughout 2021 is related to the year's edition theme of The Available City, which is led by artistic director David Brown. The Available City brings together local and international design thinkers with community stakeholders, residents, and students to chart new uses for design and architecture that respond to the existing city fabric. Today's program will focus on Soil Lab, which is a new commission from the Danish Arts Foundation responding directly to the theme of the available city. Soil Lab will be a collective gathering and workshop space located in the North Lawndale neighborhood of Chicago. The project will include workshops and built elements grounded in bricks, a material with significance to both the Chicago and the Danish architectural vernacular. The commission reflects the Danish Arts Foundation's mission to highlight Danish architecture and design traditions on a global platform, and it reflects both CABS and the Danish Arts Foundation's emphasis on global collaboration. For our program today, we are pleased to be joined by the design team behind Soil Lab, which includes Dublin-based architects Eileen Lee Kahasig and James Albert Martin, and Danish architect Anna Dora Vester and designer Maria Brun. Um, James, Eileen, and Anna Dora studied together at the Aarhus School of Architecture in Denmark. Um, and James and Eileen are now based in Dublin, where they both worked for internationally renowned architecture firms. And Maria and Anna Dora are based in Copenhagen, where they founded the architecture, design, and fine art studio NBADV in 2013. We're also pleased to be joined today by Mass Kustgaard. Mass, Mass served on the jury that selected the Soil Lab project and is a member of the Danish Art Foundation's Committee for Design and Craft. He is an architect and designer and is the founder and director of design at Urgent Agency in Copenhagen. At the end of the program, we'll have some time for questions, so please do use the Q&A function in your Zoom window to submit questions or thoughts at any point during the program. And please look out for information coming soon about our next program in April, which will be presented in partnership with the Hyde Park Jazz Festival. So without um, further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Mass to get us started. And thank you again for being here today. Thank you, Tess. <laughs> so uh, I'm so excited uh, to be here today uh, to share a little background on the process that led to the Soil Lab project. Uh, which we can all look forward to hear much more about later. So I'm just uh, a kind of a pause, uh, a warming up to what's going to happen. So my name is Mass, as I said, uh, designer and architect and uh, director of Urgent Agency. But today I'm also a member of the Danish Art Foundation, uh, which I'm pleased to uh, represent. And uh, we commissioned the outcome uh, of an open call called uh, or made in collaboration with the Chicago Architecture Biennale, uh, which led to the Soil Lab. A little bit about the Danish Art Foundation. So the Danish Art Foundation is the largest art foundation in Denmark. It's uh, made up of uh, tax money, so we could call it the People's uh, Art Foundation. This is of course not official, but it helps to understand what it is. And we support creative thinking and innovative ideas in more than 6,000 artists and art projects every year within all art funds. And we, in the Danish Art Foundation, we wish to facilitate the conversations about our shared world of art, and we invite everybody to join in. And most importantly, we believe that art should take an active part in society. Because when it does, it, um, it sparks conversations, uh, it raises questions, and it makes us reflect on our values and hereby keeps them on our toes. You could say that when we reflect and engage, we intertwine, we build, we massage the society. Uh, 
So this is the reason why the Danish Art Foundation worked to make experiences with art of high quality available to all citizens and why we are collaborating with international partners with similar values, such as the Chicago Architecture Biennale. So, um, so how did it happen? How did it start? So in 2019, Denmark participated in the, the Chicago Architecture Biennale for the first time with the project called Cabbage Patch, which was a, also an amazing project. So the duo Gambo Magnussen planted 10,000 cabbage heads and made an outdoor kitchen in historical Garfield Park in West Chicago, by the way, designed by uh, Danish landscape architect Jens Nielsen, Jens Jensen, sorry. And the project, uh, the project drew on an old history of the little known cabbage war, I'm sure you all know it, uh, between 1896 and 97 in Chicago, that was all about accessibility to affordable food sources and green spaces. Themes that is still present today, maybe even more so in the future, and kind of fantastic that we could do something that was so local and so global at the same time. So after that project, we were we could clearly see the potential in Chicago and the Biennale and also started the collaboration uh, or we wanted to take it further. So in Chicago, you're taking uh, art and culture very serious. You believe that art is uh, able to make a difference in people's lives, both on a political level, but certainly also bottom up. And so do we. So the Biennale's turn toward making art, design, and architecture available not only to the public, but making it with and for the public is very much in line with what we are working for at the Danish Art Foundation. So we began a dialogue about making a collaboration that could make these endeavors come true. Yes. So a little bit about the, um, the work and the process. So it's pretty amazing, to be honest, to receive so many genius, you know, thoughtful, well-made suggestions, and it's uh, it's kind of a dilemma, actually, both to uh, approach it. But uh, let me share a little bit here. So, so last fall, uh, the dialogue turned into an open call uh, that was responding directly to this year's theme: the available city, an urban design approach rooted in community engagement that brings together local and international design thinkers with Chicago community stakeholders, residents, and students. So the open call asked for a great idea for a new kind of shared public space. An idea that would take place in one of Chicago's many empty lots in North Lawndale, taking into consideration the culture of North Lawndale and its residents. And not least an idea that was open to find its final form in dialogue with the local community. So it would actually make sense and be of value, not only during the Biennale, but of course also afterwards, which is pretty amazing that uh, Chicago, I think, is kind of at the forefront of thinking about Biennales because they also have uh, ethical dilemmas, but you're showing the way. Anyway, sorry, the jury consisted of four members from the Danes Art Foundation, all design and architecture professionals, and four members from Chicago. David Brown, the Biennales artistic director, was part of it, as well as Sarah Herder, Craig Stevenson, and Anne-Marie Spencer, all people with extensive knowledge and community engagement architecture and design in Chicago and North Lawndale, which was extremely obvious in this process. You speak to people who are rude and love and are so engaged uh, in the both the bigger and the, uh, the local themes. It's a pretty amazing. Anyway, in the jury, we collected with decided on the Soil Lab project as the winning project because it was simply the most interesting and certainly also the most challenging <laughs> idea to realize. So in a sense, it was both deeply, deeply rooted, literally, but it's also kind of opening up for visions. And I think it's extremely inspiring. So a little bit about the Soil Lab. Of course, you'll hear it directly, in a sense, from the, the real team. But from the, the jury's point of view, so we in the jury liked Soil Lab's emphasis on material and materiality. The Soil Lab uh, project wants to show us how we as humans can give form to our world by the use of something as obvious uh, as the ground under our feet, an accessible and sustainable resource, the Soil Lab project seeks to sharpen our awareness of the materials that surround us and the space we live in. The material they are focusing on is soil, which they want to turn into bricks in a collective process. Something so simple and so genius in a sense to remind us where we are from every day that we can rebuild our lives. Interestingly, bricks are also used in both Danish and Chicago design and architecture history throughout today. In a country with almost no rock, bricks 
has been the material of choice in Denmark since the 12th century. Just as bricks became Chicago's preferred building material after the 1871 fire, where the Selman called it common brick and so the day of light. Besides the great focus on materiality, another quality of the Soil Lab is its focus on shared space. Soil Lab is both a collective space and a space of production with opportunities for community participation, which is a very central focal point in this project. And is, you know, is extremely important. It invites people to transform the earth into bricks and soil elements that again can take form into what is desirable and useful locally. So in a process like this, when doing cross-cultural collaborations, we always learn something new about the way that we are uh, doing the way. So we will come in as one kind of person with one experience, but we also come out much free, uh, richer in the other end. So already now we are extremely inspired. And it's our hope that the project will prove meaningful and gather new knowledge about how art can inform urban development in both Chicago and in Denmark. So with this framework, with this warm up, uh, I look forward to hear the, the deeper thoughts, uh, the finer details from the real team. Please let us hear it. Thank you. So everyone's checking in here. James is not here. Hello, everyone. Let's just get James in. Thank you for that lovely introduction, Lars. I think it's the most uh, eloquent synopsis of the project that we've heard yet. Could we get that text, please? <laughs> Um, yes, uh, thank you Tess and Mass for the introduction and thank you everyone for joining us for this uh, presentation of Soil Lab. Um, my name is uh, Maria and I'm part of the international team of architects and designers who created the winning entry uh, chosen to represent Denmark at the Chicago, Chicago Architecture Biennial 2021. Um, over the next 30 minutes, we will dive into what Soil Lab is, and uh, we will elaborate on our initial ideas and thoughts. And when we finish today, you will hopefully be inspired and excited, and maybe you'll even want to join the team to take part in the buildup of the site or join the workshop program as, uh, as we move into the biennial. Furthermore, we will dive into two reference projects which describe our previous work with uh, specifically ceramics and our work with the site-specific gathering point. These two projects should be seen as an inspiration and as a tested background uh, for the creation of Soil Lab. Finally, we will describe the materials and techniques that will be part of Soil Lab. Uh, we will hopefully uh, get the community of Lawndale excited about these materials and have them engage with us both before, during and after the biennial. Um, but firstly, I will move on to introduce our team. Next slide, please. <laughs> um, we are James, Eileen, and a daughter, and myself, Maria. We are uh, three architects and one designer. We are a multidisciplinary gang working in different scales, areas, and materials. We are connected and experienced uh, across disciplines. And as Tess mentioned, we all have a common past in Denmark where James, Eileen, and Anna Dorda uh, have all studied at the Aarhus School of Architecture. Since then, they've collaborated on several projects, including the piece Woven Construct, which you will get to know later in this presentation. Um, today, James and Eileen are both living and working in, uh, in Dublin. For several years, Anna Dorda and I have uh, collaborated under the name MBADV across the disciplines of architecture, design, arts, and crafts. Um, a cornerstone in our joint practice uh, is our work with ceramics. Uh, we have explored both industrial and handcrafted production 
And we often challenge the traditional use of the ceramic material to explore new potentials. Next slide, yes. Um, we were really excited on reading the brief uh, for this open call because unlike uh, other biannuals we have been involved in where the exhibitions are primarily for architects, this brief was very different. It was a real site with real people and we were very inspired by the ambition of the available city. We saw it as an opportunity to challenge what the program asked of us and think about how we can give back to the people of North Lawndale. Um, in this overview, you see in the image uh, showing the vacant lot in the bottom left corner, you see our site that will become a new gathering place of North Lawndale. It will be an experimental laboratory and a place where creativity can flourish and uh, unfold. Just to zoom in on the context of North Lawndale, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, um, the context is a place made of brick. You only need to walk down the street to get a sense of the materiality of the neighbourhood. Community buildings, churches, schools, car washes, houses, uh, even hair salons are all constructed in brick. Uh, this was our first visit on Google Earth, um, picking up these lovely fragments of the beautiful, warm, sandy, sandy coloured brick um, which all forms the fabric of the neighbourhood. So brick basically is the, um, the building blocks of North Lawndale and it's, it's hard not to be taken with that when you, um, your first impression. And so then just to zoom out a little bit to, to create or to place our project in a wider context. Um, Brick is a material with a significance to both Chicago and Denmark and their architectural vernacular. Um, as Mass earlier mentioned, uh, the Great Chicago Fire in 1871, building codes were changed, a ban on wooden buildings, and then brick buildings are synonymous since that period with the city. But what emerged as a consequence was a rich conversation in material. Um, similarly, in, in Denmark, the architecture of the modern Danish state is defined by the same material. So both places, um, there's a material culture that's articulated in, in brick. Uh, so these just are four projects that we have shown here that stand out as um, significant in that the Manadnock building was the tallest load bearing brick building ever constructed. And it's just incredibly impressive to see the section with the, the scale of the load bearing brick and the beautiful uh, Grundvig's church, um, inspired by the stepped gables of village churches in Denmark. And of course, all of you will recognize the beautiful um, Kai Fisker social housing and Frank Lloyd Wright's own home. That's just to give you a, a flavor or a context um, to, this, to this material. So the brick culture forms the foundation um, of Soy Lab. Um, not only that, but um, Soila's proposal was inspired by the work of Jens Jensen, a Danish American landscape architect, whose work can be seen throughout several of Chicago's major parks. Mass actually made reference to last year's or two years ago proposal um, of Cabbage Patch. We didn't realize that that was in one of the parks designed by um, Jensen. Um, the closest of Jensen's designs to our site or our vacant lot um, is Douglas Park. So widely considered the dean of prairie style landscape architecture. Um, and in the course of his long career, he worked with many no, well-known architects of the Chicago School, including Lee, Louis Sullivan and Frank Lloyd Wright. Jensen believed in the importance of uh, reconnecting with oneself and one's community through engaging with nature and natural materials. He went on to found what he termed a school of soil and treated his garden as living laboratories. So, you'll see we've taken some of Jensen's core ideas and incorporated them into our project, not just the title, um, Soil Lab, but uh, sort of a, a blatant uh, combination of two, but also um, this idea of creating a gathering space. So one of the unique features of his parks and gardens was this council ring, as he called it, a low stone seat, which you see in the image um, on the screen. Um, 
a low stone seat encircling a central pit. And this space uh, for social gathering brought people together. Um, so Soil Lab 2 will form a meeting place, um, a special meeting between architecture, objects and people. Um, and this meeting will involve two main efforts. Um, so first, the making of structures out of bricks, ram dirt and ceramic tiles. Um, but it also will be um, a construction, form the construction of spaces for communal gathering. Um, essentially, Soil Lab is a ceramic workshop. Um, built from red, readily available materials and um, that are produced on site. And participants then are engaged um, in the process of making. And it is our hope that through this process, a new community is, is made. Yes, and next we will tell a little bit about uh, two of our previous projects, one being Heavy Stack and the other one being Woven Construct. Um, uh, this project is Heavy Stack. It's made by Maria and myself. It's a series of uh, ceramic sculptures and it's, it's, it explores uh, the potentials of form, materials and aesthetics. Um, in our practice, we have a strong focus on materials and their potentials. Uh, for some years now, we've been working with ceramic, uh, both as a structural and aesthetic material. Because, of, because the use of the ceramic is well known to all of us in small scale, such as vessels, pots, vases, and so on. And for us, it's been interesting to scale the material in our proje projects uh, to give it a new meaning. Um, in 2016, we came across an old uh, brick extrusion mach machine, uh, which we used for producing the main focus of this pro project uh, around donut-like uh, building block. Uh, in these images, you get a glimpse into the process in the ceramic workshop working with the extrusion machine um, from testing method and design over redesigning and finally to the actual production. Um, in this project process, we've been working with the, and we needed um, knowledge from skilled craftspeople. Uh, in this case, uh, from Tomrup Ceramic Workshop who will also be joining us in North Lawndale. Um, not with this extrusion machine, but uh, another one <laughs> similar. Um, uh, after the rings were fired and finished at the, the, the ceramic workshop, we got them into the studio uh, where we made one-to-one -one mock ups and experimented with uh, stacking the rings and making a load bearing uh, construction around. Uh, making these uh, one is to one, we were exploring the potential of the design language. Um, these are the final objects uh, made from the ceramic building blocks with a wooden uh, construction in oak. Some of these objects are purely sculptural and others uh, with the poten potential of function. These were not um, these were exhibited uh, project, an exhibited project, not um, not an actual function or yeah. Um, so this process of uh, developing uh, a design is an example uh, of how yeah of how we could imagine an, uh, uh, a process in North Lawndale as well, exploring the material and the form. Uh, in this case, we revisited the project again, and eventually it turned into something more functional, a uh, ceramic chair. Uh, for this chair, we used the same production method and material and formwork, but it um, but created a semi-functional and recognizable piece of furniture instead. In 2018, um, for the reform design biennale, Myself, Anadora and Eileen um, collaborated with this project, Woven Construct. Um, so Woven Construct is a seat, um, it was a screen and a space, and it's a meeting space essentially for the, the local community. It's located in um, the public garden of Munkerup Hus, um, a beautiful art gallery in the north coast of Denmark overlooking the Kattegat Sea. Um, the screen is orientated on a south east, south or northeast, southwest, uh, axis, so it sits with its back to the sun and um, catching the evening light and views to the garden 
and see beyond. Um, at just over two meters, it's, it's kind of scaled to the, the human body. And so where the body touches the structure, the horizontal members rotates to create a bench and provide a, a backrest. And these subtle adjustments kind of set up a rhythm of and scale of the screen, allowing kind of moments of transparency and privacy. Um, it's, so it's made out of 105 pieces of Douglas fir, 182 pieces of pine dowels and 14 steel shoes. Um, and it was at the, the National uh, Danish Workshop in Copenhagen where we designed this structure. Maybe it's nice now, James, to mention um, that we've been fortunate enough to get access to this workshop again this time. And um, we're looking forward in May to all four of us being resident in Copenhagen, um, beginning experiments with, with Soilab, with, with um, testing. Um, also in, in this image on the screen that you can see here, this was us during um, woven construct. So making mock-ups, stacking elements, one is to 10 models, uh, CNCing the dowels. Um, yeah, working in the work workshop. And this kind of, this testing then, I guess, as well continued on site. Um, we, um, over the course of the week of, this, of setting out, kind of these images kind of are, are tracking that kind of process. We um, we're setting out this this pavilion in a in a public park um, and kind of developing friendships then with the local the locals that would pass each morning on their way through the park to the beach with their dog and um, some physically helping us um, with the, the the pieces with the elements and and um, others not uh, but they would kind of track our pro progress each day as they passed our, our, our lack of progress and. Uh, and I, they were naturally curious. Of course, a conversation would start and over the week then through different levels of engagement, they were also kind of part of this building process. And kind of in the end, then when they joined us um, for the Vernie Sash, it's kind of, it was a bringing it together, uh, bringing their families. It was, it was this kind of celebration of, of the structure, but also those relationships that were built and, and kind of conversations that were kind of continued. And also just to see the, the structure come alive um, during the Vernissage where it was actually activated with, with people and see how they engaged um, with this new public space in, in the garden. And it's maybe nice to say that now, two years later, um, the Douglas fir has aged into a beautiful uh, grey um, colour that has a very different character to the pink um, that you see in the images at the moment. But I guess we hope um, something similar could happen in, in North Lawndale by being outdoors um, making the beginning of, of the project that we would have, um, yeah, a similar um, experience with, with the community. And then here we uh, have two reference projects that we were inspired by. Um, for a specific reason, not necessarily their aesthetics, but more that the community were heavily involved in the construction um, of both projects. On the left, you see um, Peter Zumther's Bruder Klaus um, church or chapel um, in Germany, built in round concrete. And on the right, we have um, Martin Rauch's cinema in Silplatz, um, built with or made of round earth, um, similar to a technique we will discuss soon but there's something about the the rawness or the material the finish um resulting in the construction process um juxtaposed with the finer craft in both of the projects um that speaks to us and how we imagine um soil lab where you have this this rougher raw finish and then the, the element of the craft um and it's the joining of those two things with with people with no experience in construction and those with a lot of experience sharing that um yeah and just the the technique and the aesthetic that comes from that i was in the middle <laughs> um, so we were inspired by oh, that's we were we were also inspired by um the drawings of of uh, francis quantero so he's an 18th century french architect and um, he, he's kind of the, the grandfather of the um, traditional ram dirt technique. 
so its development was is how this development now has kind of been significantly um, influenced by this 18th century architect. But we were inspired by his DIY drawings, but in particular, these drawings and this publication was promoting kind of rammed earth as a self-building construction method. Um, and so just going through that construction then step by step, it kind of involves um, this composite construction involves um, a base of brick. It's then on top of that brick, you, you have the, the cast rammed earth um, on the rammed earth. Then on top of the rammed earth and to, on top of the brick, um, we have the ceramic tiles. Um, that, cer that ceramic then protects the top of the, the earth wall, but it also then provides a seat. Um, and the timber is, is necessary to actually make the formwork, but also this beautiful relationship between timber and, and soil in that the soil is, is more absorbent than the timber. So we can imagine that, that tim the timber elements could actually re-inhabit the soil wall to form shelves or to form a place to hang your coat um, while working. Yes. Um, so through workshops, we want to develop the projects through in a close collaboration with the Chicago residents. And uh, Annette Skov, who works in Copenhagen with the community engagement through the arts, is working uh, with us in planning these workshops. Um, next slide. Uh, we will engage the community to envision, design and construct through the exploration of materials. We'll also engage the community to design building materials with the aim to create a unique North Lawndale brick. Uh, we'll make structures out of bricks, rammed earth and ceramic tiles. And with these, uh, we'll construct spaces for communal gathering. We want to build structures such as benches, tables and walls to encourage interaction, course and conversation throughout uh, North Lawndale. And I am muted, sorry. We're aware that there's a lot of great work already happening in Chicago through various different communities and through the available city. And I guess we're, we understand that our contribu contribution is in one specific lot, but when we zoom out, we see that through design interventions, that perhaps over time um, that, these new techniques could, could be the seeds that grow up in other vacant lots um, throughout the city. But in responding to, to the available city, reimagining, remaking this vacant lot, um, yeah, through design interventions, that's how we see um, Soil Lab as, as perhaps engaging in, in a bigger, a bigger idea than, than just this lot, that it that it equips people with new skills. Um, to, to grow beyond beyond North Ondale. 